are listening to the Heartland Author Podcast. I am Aaron Apollo Camp. For this episode, I had the opportunity to interview Dr. Terry Sizemore. Dr. Sizemore is a veterinarian and author and the owner of the book publishing company A to Z Press. I'm here with Dr. Terry Sizemore, who is an author, veterinarian, and book publisher. Uh, Dr. Sizemore, welcome to the Heartland Author Podcast. Well, welcome. Thank you for welcoming me. It's a pleasure to be here. Feel free to introduce yourself to our listeners. Well, I have been a veterinarian for very many years and have had the wonderful opportunity of meeting many wonderful pet owners and their pets. And I also have fallen in love with children's literature through my interaction with several children in my lifetime. And so in 2016, I created a publishing house to kind of combine everything. And so I created some veterinary books for basic information for families and pet owners of dogs, cats, and horses so far. More are on the horizon. And I have over a 100 children's picture books, which I love dearly. We have something for everyone. I have what I call my boy book author in England who does books on worms and spiders and turtles and the the deep sea and eels and squids and all sorts of different things and then we have we have the educational ones we have an alphabet book and we have opposites and concept things that we're doing we have holiday books we have several christmas books that are very fun and we have Uh, books that are with a soft message. One is on finding value in yourself. One is The Little White Kitten and Her Little Red Mittens, which is my award-winning book about a little kitten who just loves her mittens and she loses them. And she finds joy in giving and sharing in the middle of her loss. We have Thankful ABCs and Just Right and a little book called Oops that's about a little girl who's just trying to have some fun and do some fun things, and she finds herself making a few mistakes along the way, but Grandpa says that's okay. And we have Roman is Bigger, who learns about how to express his very real emotions and find them, one on respect, one on the golden rule, one on joy outside the box, where Joy McKay is a dance teacher, and she wants every child to know that even if they don't fit a, quote, mold or stereotype, that they can also have fun and achieve. And we have um, several novels. We I have a novel uh, from England about a boy who finds a magic case that grants wishes, a man who did a post-Civil War Um, historical fiction book about a relationship between a white man and a black man, a sci-fi book called 2059, a thriller called Chasing Nightmares. I have my own novel about grief called Good Grief. I have Passion and Purpose, Black Female Surgeons, edited by Dr. Praise Matamavi in Mississippi. It's a collection of 75 Black women who became surgeons in all the different areas of medicine. And we have uh, a book about succeeding in college by Professor William Pizio, who wants everyone thinking about college to have a positive experience. And we have faith-based books. One is a children's book about divine designs, about all the very unique and individual animals. Well, not all of them, but selected ones. A love letter from God, some devotionals called Lighting Candles, the 23rd Psalm. And I think we have even more. I have another one about autism that my author in South Africa, who has two autistic children, wrote called All Fairies Are Not the Same. And I think we're, oh, and I also just created a really fun book for families called The Little Book of Big Ideas for Activities, Crafts, and Celebrations for Holidays and just every season of the year to have fun, either If you're by yourself or with a group, adults can even do it. And it's geared for families with children to just have a springboard of ideas to have really great times with their children. Now, uh, how many books have you 
yourself written and without spoiling too much, I think you might have mentioned some of them in your intro. Uh, what are uh, some of them about? And if they're illustrated, who did the illustration? Well, I have illustrators all over the world. I love my artists. Um, I have some gentlemen in Pakistan, some in India. My girls are in Ukraine, Russia, Belarus, South Africa, Brazil. I have found friends all over the world. And I am not even sure if I can number the, the books that I have personally written, probably at least 20. But um, yes, most of them are just very creatively illustrated. The you know, I know that cr the creative process is something that a lot of people treasure, and I do too. So I find the talent, and then they share their talent with me to make the books very beautiful. And we're also interested in folks who have their ideas and their aspiring authors. We'd be happy to entertain um, helping them get their little books published if they have ideas or dreams of being in print. Now, uh, now, is your uh, publishing company a uh, an indie press or a small traditional publisher? Well, I suppose I would be a very small. Well, I guess I consider myself a small indie publisher, but the traditional publishers like Random House and those types of things, I think I'm traditional, but just very small scale because. It's a pretty big world in the publishing world now. There are a lot of folks who have really found out that if they're not accepted by a big company like Random House, which would be any any author's dream and any author's dream to be to have Hollywood entertain taking their material and putting it in into film. But if you don't have that ability, but you still want to get in print and you still want some help or guidance, it's available. And some people do very well on their own. They have a large social media following. They do a lot of very interesting things to get the word out there for their their work. Now, are all, are all of the books that you've written children's books or are some of them written for a young adult or older audience? Yes, they're both. The um, the novels, the ch the picture books are obviously for young children and learning to read, learning to uh, do concepts, things like that. But the novels, some of them are adult novels. On the Sixth the Day was written by Bud Lawrence, and he just really loves Florida, and he loves the post-Civil War era and he did a nice job chasing nightmares is for a young adult probably no younger than 14 up to adults i enjoyed the book and the same with 2059 the cute books that are for probably the middle readers like seventh eighth ninth grade and older are david morgan's two books one is called the strange case of william whippersnapper i kind of mentioned it briefly earlier and this book is just darling because it's about a young boy named William who is a talented boy, smart, but he's into mischief a lot. And he finds a little case in the roots of a tree in the backyard, and it's called a 1B prize, and it grants wishes, but all of the wishes go terribly wrong. Like, for instance, he wishes that he is he's asked to go cut firewood. And he thinks, I wish that I could have a year's worth of firewood so that he doesn't have to go out and cut that, right? Well, what happened was it cut down all of his father's cherry trees to, to grant that wish. And that wasn't something William wanted to do because it upset his dad very badly. So he doesn't want the prize anymore. And in order to not have it in his life, he has to give it back to the first given and then back to the prize maker. So he has journeys with his sister going back in time and figuring out 
how to get it to its location so that he no longer has the burden. But I love that little case, and I wish he would have developed a better friendship with it. And then David wrote another novel for about the same age group called The Magic Tape. And it's about a young man named Tristan who's a loner and just doesn't know how to find his way in the world. And he is given a tape that he puts into the machine and it's a magic tape and it transforms him into a magical world where all of the metaphors are musical and he has to save the world. It's the ongoing theme of good versus evil and there is music and harmony voices versus noise and and chaos and so he is to save the world of music and the world of goodness and he develops some friendships that are very tender and sweet in there with some of the characters and so David does a nice job of weaving the story and kind of drawing the reader in. So we do have some novels for older folks, and I have about 10 of those. Um, yes, they, um, I have another book by, for animal lovers by Ingrid uh, Ivy Everts about her golden retriever and all of about 15 stories about how Tess got into some trouble in Rome and we integrated all of the famous sites in Rome in that book, like the Spanish steps, the Colosseum, the Pantheon, the parks, um, all of the famous things there. So it was a fun book. And when they went to all those different places, the dog and she had some interesting things happen to them. So she wrote about that. Now, this was a question that I was going to be toward the end of the interview that I had written down about your publishing company. But since you mentioned so much about it already, uh, I didn't catch the name of the company at the beginning of the interview. Uh, what, what is the name of your uh, publishing company? I'm sorry, I didn't mention that. I should have. It's called A and the number two Z Press LLC. And it is just anything from A to Z, you know, I do only G rated material. So I've had some authors bring up some very nice books, but I don't do, you know, violence or romance um, that's advanced and things like that. So, but we do the children's work and we do adults and faith-based books, things like that for folks. I have just signed on a couple of new authors. One's doing an Easter book about the Easter bunny and another is doing, it's a mom who wrote about her son. And it's a very tender book about how much she loves him and watching him grow. And it sort of takes her from knowing she was gonna have a baby to being a grandma herself and, and all the different stages of life with that child. So that's gonna be a picture book for her and her family as well. And hopefully others will enjoy that. But we, um, and I have a, a lady who is 100 years old. <laughs> she is wonderful. She was a teacher as well. She's had an amazing life. She's lived in New York and now she's relocated to Florida. But she felt that in the educational world that the children weren't learning to write cursive writing. So she wrote a book called Sk Stick to the Script. And it is giving the children exercises to do to learn how to write in cursive so that they can sign their name and write signatures and things like that, or maybe write letters. And we felt that that was a great niche. And she's also write, written an autobiography of her life, kind of paralleling with a friend of hers autobiography called Brass into Gold. And it's very interesting for a woman who's 100 years old and still has businesses and rental properties and she's in good health and she's doing a great job. And she's one of my very nice authors as well. Now, does your publishing company offer services like editing, marketing that are beyond uh, publishing and illustration? Sure. If someone partners with me with the book, then all of those services are at no cost. We go through the book together. We discuss if it's a picture book. We I offer them different artists to choose from. If it's a novel, 
then we edit it and we talk about formatting and things like that. There are formatting services available if they want to retain all of their own rights and do their own um, marketing and and selling and things like that. I'm fine with that. I can do cover work. Sometimes cover work can be very challenging. And I think the covers are very, very critical to the sale of the books. And I think we have a very creative team that helps with that, that need as well. Now, uh, one final question, and this is about your work as a veterinarian. Uh, are you a large or small animal veterinarian? Well, at one time I was both, but now I really just concentrate on the small animals and I basically just do dogs and cats. So I don't have, I love birds and rabbits and guinea pigs and ferrets and all of the other little critters that some of the veterinarians are very skilled at um, taking care of, but I sort of limit my activity to dogs and cats right now. And I have owned horses for over 40 years so I am very, very well versed with them as well. Dr. Terry Sizemore, you were an amazing guest for this podcast. I thank you for appearing on the Heartland Author Podcast. And if uh, some of your authors want to appear in uh, future episodes as uh, interview guests on the Heartland Author Podcast, I would be more than welcome uh, to uh, have them on. I think a couple of them would really, really enjoy that. I know um, David Morgan, who has published over 50 books with me, would be a great guest for you. And um, every, all of my authors would really cherish the opportunity to do that and talk about their work and their goals and dreams and aspirations. I love interviewing guests with experience on both the writing and publishing sides of the book industry. This is Aaron Apollo Camp reminding y'all to write your imagination. Bye for now. You can learn more about me and my book writing projects at camparenapollo.witsite.com forward slash author AAC. You can follow me on Facebook at Author AAC and on Instagram at AAC Scribe. Copyright 2023, Aaron Apollo Camp, all rights reserved. This podcast episode is intended for the private listening of our audience. Any reuse or retransmission of this podcast episode without the express written consent of the podcast host is prohibited, except under fair use guidelines. Royalty free music and sound effects obtained from https colon forward slash forward slash www.zapsplat.com.